Rick, uh, Luca clearly felt like there should have been a timeout called there after that late offensive rebound you got before uh, Porzingis missed the three. Uh, what were your thoughts? What are your thoughts about that sequence? Yeah, I just I like the ball in his hands and the defense not being set. Um, we got one great look at a three from Burke at the top, and then we got an offensive rebound and and KP got a, got a look. So we got two good looks. Um, and you always want to save your time out if you can. So, um, you know, that's that's the reason. And, um, you know, it, it's very difficult to call a timeout and go against uh, a Milwaukee set defense out of the timeout. Um, so I, I think in those situations, if you can put the ball in your best player's hands, um, you'll get better opportunities. And I thought we got two good ones. Well, and, and given that sequence and, and kind of the way Luca reacted to it, uh, you know, were you able to kind of discuss it with him afterward? Yeah, I'm not going to get into that publicly. Uh, you oh, know. Okay. Listen, look, we got two good shots. Um, so, you know, and we and we preserved the timeout. So, you know, in, 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 as a coach, you know, that's 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 all you can hope for in that situation. Yeah. Luca, you obviously wanted a timeout called after you guys got that late offensive rebound. Um, having had some time to process the situation, what are your thoughts on that at this point? Uh, I don't know. It's called, uh, it's called decision. So, But if we were to make the shot, everything would be good. So uh, just uh, if we make the shot, everything would be different, you know. But I don't know. Uh, it's called just the decision to call a time. I don't know, so I think it's good. All right, Brad. Well, I asked Rick this. Um, did you get it since you were motioning on the side? Did you get a chance to talk to him? Did he explain, you know, why he didn't think it was a good idea to call a no. timeout? No, not yet. Okay. Is do you plan to ask him about it or? Mm, I don't know. Uh, uh, if we talk, we're gonna talk. You know, it's not uh, it's not gonna be in the media. So it's I understand. Be, uh, okay. Between us. Brad, do you have anything else? Yeah. Uh, what, what did you think about the you know just the way you guys hung in there on a really tough shooting night in some ways? Yeah, I think we're, we we played bad. Uh, I'm gonna say that. I think we played bad. Uh, uh, it wasn't our great our good game, but you know we hang up there. Uh, you know, we had a chance to go up in that situation. Uh, so I think we did some good things, even on a bad night. So essentially what we have here is Carlisle, uh, he declined to take the final timeout because he wanted to keep, Milwaukee's a great defensive team, and he felt running a half-court set with a set Milwaukee defense was not to their advantage, that that would play into their hands and that it was better to catch them off guard in a scramble mode following an offensive rebound. Again, two great looks for Dallas. Trey Burke, top of the key. Great look with a good three-point shooter. Not a great one, but a good one. And then you get another opportunity with KP, which is a shot he's made several times, obviously, throughout his career, and many, many times, you know, if, if you're not putting in that exact circumstance. So he's very capable of that shot, of making that shot. The difference here boils down to whether or not uh, the ball went in. And Luca kind of echoed that as well, essentially saying, you know, we're not having this conversation. We're not talking about this if the ball goes in. We're not upset. My reaction isn't a big deal. Now, it might be a disagreement in the moment. I understand Luca looked frustrated. He looked somewhat demonstrative, I suppose. But I understand both... Tim McMahon and Brad Townsend addressing it. It's it's something to ask about for sure because it's a big moment where there's uh, a miscommun not a miscommunication like a, a difference in agreement on how they should have proceeded. Luca for that that impulse moment wanted the timeout. He wanted to run something. You know, get the ball back in his hands. I get it. He's he is a superstar player. He wants the ball in his hands. That's my only problem. If I had one with that final set is that after he passed to Burke at the start of the possession, never came back to him. Goes from Burke 
to Kali Stein, to Burke, to KP. Burke's a good playmaker, and he made the right play. Again, Burke made the right play to get KP that look. It just didn't go. And, you know, there's there's a lot to take from that, but I don't think it's worth... I don't think it's worth... Um, twisting around or as ESPN has kind of thrown out there, essentially turning this into a situation where we're like, oh, Carlisle and Luca had an argument after the fact. Both guys, I understand why they asked, but both guys asked Carlisle and Luca if they had to talk after the game in the locker room, whatever about it. And I like, you know, I, I expect Carlisle to say, you know, I'm not going to get into that here. Luca essentially had the same message. Like, Luca's reaction, the kind of sheepish grin at first, essentially tells me there was some kind of dialogue, and that's not a bad thing. If, if you talk about something, it's constructive. That's how you get on the same page, and you make sure both perspectives are heard and understood. No issue with that. But Luca's reaction, his initial kind of expression, and then him just saying, like, you know, if we were to have a conversation about it, I wouldn't get into it here in the media. Totally understand. Love that perspective. There's too much, I think, in, in the professional sports world in general, too much sniping through the media. So I like here how Luca avoided, avoided kind of taking the bait, if you will, for that scenario and kind of venting a, a moment of grievance, which, again, from a 21-year-old, you would understand like, there's a certain maturity that isn't usually there. It's not common to be there. But nevertheless, it's a situation where I think Dallas made the right move. And despite Luca's reaction in the moment, I understand it. But I think Dallas made the right play uh, working in the scramble drill because that is a situation where you usually break a defense's back. Getting that offensive board and then getting while the defense is scrambling to try and reset – getting that look that they got, which is a very good look, a very makeable look, you can't really argue beyond that. You kind of have to understand what it is. Now I'm going to throw it real quick to KP. Give me a second. I'll throw it to KP now talking on that final play as well. And we're going to get his perspective um, on, on the shot. Yeah, Christoph, so on the, the next to last possession, uh, you know, you guys missed a shot, hit the rebound, the ball swings to you. You're you're clearly open. What did you think about that shot? Did you think you rushed it in any way? Of, you know, kind of what was your thought process and all that? That's the one, yeah, that's the one. Or, I mean, it's a good look, but it's just like an out of rhythm because I see all of a sudden he's running at me fast and it's just a little bit of that feel that, that – I need to still find where I don't need to rush that shot. I, I shot also one in the first half uh, because the time was running uh, down the shot clock and I kind of rushed the shot and airballed it. And after that, I'm like, even, even if the clock is running down, I had actually like two or three more seconds. Even if the clock is running down, then I still don't need to rush the shot. There's a bigger chance that I rush it and I miss it than there is that, it's that one zero point one second is going to change if I'm if it counts or doesn't count, you know. So kind of that was my that was my thought process right now when I was in the locker room and and, and that look, yeah. I mean, could have could I mean I could have made that shot too. Just take my time, knock it down, and and you know we're up one or or I think it was yeah we're down two at that moment. So um, just yeah, just out of rhythm and 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 that's it. Keep keep putting in the work, and sooner or later. Uh, I'm going to be playing at the level I need to be playing at. Uh, Brandon? So again, good perspective from Christoph Porzingis here. I really appreciate KP's honesty and uh, openness with the media. He's very open about things, whether he's talking about, you know, exactly what's going through his head or his kind of analysis or assessment of his game, whether it's good or bad, he's always insightful and he's always open. You know, some guys are kind of reserved. They're kind of closed off or they give sort of answers that keep you at a distance. I think KP is always willing and welcome to let people into his head and let them know, like, you know, this is what I saw. This is what I think of it. And he, he, own, he takes ownership. He'll say, like, 
I got to be better. I, I have to make that shot. I have to be better. And I think that'll come with repetition. My rhythm is off. You know, I, I had a great look. It's a shot I've made, but I saw the closeout coming. And having not played much in so long, I rushed it. And I knew as I was doing it that I was rushing it. And it's just one of those things that it happens. I really appreciate that. Um, and I also like, I don't know if it was in that clip exactly, but uh, Kevin Gray Jr. of 105.3 The Fan uh, was also in there. And I'll probably end up doing a, a, a collaboration at some point with Kevin as a guest on here, or I'll make an appearance on his channel as well, which you should check out. Uh, I think it's called The Gray Area. I, I want to get that title right. I'll, I'll check it in here in a bit. But uh, he asked KP starting out, like, how do you feel physically being your second game back and playing about 30 minutes? KP basically says, physically, I'm feeling fine. Felt fresh after last game. And he basically says he was surprised by how many minutes he got in this game. And that had he had known he would have played this many minutes, uh, he might have, um, you know, approached it a little bit more differently, a little more calmly. And again, that's, I think that's great, honest insight that you just don't get a lot of from a lot of athletes, you know, and it's, it's refreshing. Uh, 